Hi everyone, welcome back to Get A Brew. Today I want to look at kegging, specifically using the corny kegs. It's, it's commonly known as corny keg, full name's Cornelius keg. It's available in multiple different sizes. So this one that I have here is 19 liter. Um, you can see it's stainless steel body. It's got a black rubber top and bottom. It's available in multiple sizes, six, nine, 12, and 19 liters. It comes with um, two ball lock posts. You can see here on, on the top of the corny keg, and it's actually got imprinted in to it there, in and out. The reason it's got that in, in it for you is to indicate what one's liquid and what one's gas. Just pop this lid off. I'll explain the lid to you. So once that that goes in at an angle and round, and then you just push pressure down on the bale there. So rubber seal, rubber O-ring, that will move slightly when you start to put CO2 into the corny keg. That's perfectly fine. It's just fine and it's, it's seal. Um, this little uh, pull ring here is a PRV, which stands for pressure release valve. So you can pull that up to let uh, gas escape um, if you've overcarbonated or you need to adjust the pressure. So that's your lid. You can see on the out post here that there's a long dip tube that runs down to the bottom of the keg. And you can see on the gas post here, the end one, there's a very small dip tube. So for ease for this video, I'm going to show you these parts separately. So. Here is the two um, ball lock disconnects. The only difference with these, this, this is the little poppet. So that's a little poppet that sits inside. The difference between the liquid and gas is, is quite easy. So there's little marks on the nuts of the gas post, whereas the liquid post is smooth. So that's your two posts. Um, in beneath those posts, you'll see there's a dip tube. So on this side on the gas, it's much shorter and that's a good indication for when you're filling the keg that you just cover that with liquid and then you know that you've filled the keg adequately. And then this is the liquid dip tube. So we sell all of these things as spares. This is um, a brand new uh, corny keg. There's lots of people out in the market there selling reconditioned secondhand corny kegs. All of our corny kegs are brand new, multiple sizes. All the spare parts are on stock. So that's taking you through the body and the makeup of the corny keg. Now, when I say they're multiple sizes, people ask me why they're not so much cheaper for the little dumpy ones as they are for the big ones. Um, the money is in the components for the top and the bottom and the semen of that. It's not in the sheet of stainless steel on the side. So they're all of the same diameter. It's just a different um, length of stainless sheet around it. So that is the corny keg covered. Then how are they commonly connected? So they're commonly connected with the use of ball lock disconnects. And two ball lock disconnects here. The difference explained in the color is the lighter ones, they come in white or gray, um, is gas, and the black ones are liquid. Now, there's two different types of John Guest fittings and Doubtite fittings. They're quick release fittings. So they simply thread on here. So this is a threaded 516 or threaded to 8 mil. Uh, we'll, we'll pop the product codes up so that you can get access to these. That's the die type version. Um, we'll pop that on the gas post actually. This is the John Guest one quarter FFL 238. So it screws on there. Um, as I've explained, gas and liquid under pressure, you're not going to want anything to leak. You may wish to consider putting some plumber's tape on the thread before you screw that on, some PTFE tape. and when you're putting your quick disconnect tubing on, you want to make sure that you're doing a really neat um, cut on that. So this tubing should arrive to you. You can order it in meter length. So if you order one meter, we cut it one meter. If you want five, it usually comes in a roll. My guys should be cutting this with a nice straight edge, just with the Stanley blade, ensuring that there's no tears, rips, or imperfections. And then how this works with the quick release with the hard and clear tubing and the John Guest fittings is simply pops in and then you pull. If you want to release it, you pull 
the little disc in around the sides, push the tubing in and then pull nice and quickly to release. And if you want to reseal, just line it up, pop it in and pull back to lock it in place. So that's liquid covered. And then if we take um, gas ball lock disconnect, this occasion it's 5 sixteenths to 8 mil. Um, some hard and clear 5 sixteenths tubing, pop in, securely locked in place, and that's gas. So look, there's options there if you want to make, instead of using plastic, we have um, the stainless steel ball lock disconnects available as an option. They have the same threaded finish as do the plastic ones. So you can add the quick disconnects. So we've covered the makeup of this, the connections, so you know, how do you connect the ball lock post. So, so take our gas in post here. You can see that these ball lock disconnects have bearings inside them and you can just pull them up and down with your fingers there like that. So to pop this on, you pull it up using finger and thumb put over the top, and then I just usually push, I usually just push the hammer that home. That's that on securely. You can see there it's on nice and secure. This is on nice and secure, and this has been cut nice and straight. Now, so to disconnect that, again, um, usually I would use this sort of movement, two fingers and thumb, pull that up, and it just pops off nice and easily. Um, for maintenance and cleaning, these come off with like a socket set, so just, Take that off, you can see what the inside of them looks like here. So the little poppet, which pops through into, into here, and the seals, make sure they're in good condition. The liquid works in the exact same way because it's the exact same fitting. So when it comes to um, filling the keg, what you're going to want to do is put your um, beer into the keg and there's a multitude of different ways that you can carbonate that. So you can naturally carbonate it by adding sugar and doing secondary fermentation, a bit like bottle conditioning. Or you could um, add pressure using a CO2 tank and a, a regulator. You can do that in two ways. So you can do it over time. So you can set the PSI to the PSI that you want and um, allow it to trickle in and absorb that over a seven day period. Or you can do a forced carbonation where you just turn, turn it up to 30 PSI or full whack and shake it so, or roll it, you know, put the keg on the floor, turn the gas on full and just roll your foot back and forth on it for 30 seconds to, to force it or shake the, the CO2 in the solution. Now, I've gave you those three options. You're gonna to want to get yourself a regulator and a CO2 tank. So um, we bring these tanks in from uh, Bryland in Belgium, 2 kg, got a nice little carry handle, um, food grade CO2, excellent quality product. The um, Mark IV uh, Kegland regulator with the Dow type uh, quick disconnect will allow you to very easily um, fit the CO2 um, regulator onto the tank. Now, this, the key with this here, you can see there's a spare washer on it. This washer needs to make a good seal on this tank. You can see there that that is your um, seal and then the nut just pops on and threads nice and easily onto the tank of gas. Nothing to be concerned about at this stage at all. Gas can be, and pressure can be something that people can be wary of doing. Now you could get a little wrench Tighten that up, make sure it's in place. Again, if you wanted, you could use some plumber's PTFE tape. If you're new to kegging and you're not sure how to work a regulator, it's simple. There's two um, dials. One tells you the dispensing pressure and one tells you how much is left in the tank. And then there's this little pressure release valve, which is, is the safety feature in the regulator. So because I, I can't see what I'm doing with this one, there's another one here. This is one of the Bryland ones that we supply as well. So you can see here, knob in the middle, the same as this is a knob in the middle, two dials and a pressure release valve. There's is just slightly different. Now, um, this comes with a Y-shaped two-piece and you can connect up um, using the, the way Bryland would do it with the seven mil fittings and crimping the hosing and stuff. I prefer the quick release. So 
if it was me, I'd be taking this Y off and popping uh, John Guest um, quick release uh, fitting on there to allow you to just move the gas lines that little bit easier. And if you needed to replicate the tap, uh, John Guest shut off tap will do that exact same thing. But to get back to explaining what these do, this dial here is your dispensing pressure. So bar and PSI managed by um, the control here, the same as this one. So just positive and negative adjustment of the, the dial. And then this little dial here tells you what's left in the CO2 tank. Different beers will require different levels of carbonation. So a Saison will be very highly carbonated, effervescent, and that's part of the style. A barrel aged Imperial Stout that you've aged at home for a couple of years you're not going to want to um, use a high level of carbonation. You're going to want that to be much more subtle. So there's carbonation charts available and Kuhn's designing a new branded PDF document that we're going to be able to email out to our customers explaining the Kagan process with pictures and it'll include that chart which will be able to identify to you uh, dispensing pressures, carbonation levels and look, if you're stuck I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but there's online calculators that teach you how to do that. Brewer's Friend, we use it for recipe development and you can go on there and use it for ABV calculation or you can indeed use it for calculating the carbonation level. So look, that's the connecting of the CO2 tank up. If we have this um, fitted in, we've got a keg lid here. So if we pop this on, so just putting that into. So just popping that on, on there into place. Gas um, that we've rigged up earlier using the 516 spear line, the dow tight fitting. And this, that just pops in. The same as all the other fittings. Make sure you force it in, pull it. And then you can see gas post on here. And then just pop that down on so it's nice and secure and tight. So I've now created um, a gas supply to the tank. Now there's lots of different lengths of tubing, lots of different sizes of tubing. Personally I don't think it matters but we're going to go with 5 sixteenths for the gas and 3 eighths for the liquid. So we've got the regulator rigged up and if we turn on our gas supply we'll hear that there's a leak there. So that's going to need a little wrench and a little tighten. Um, you can hear now that there's no leak coming from that. So we've got the gas on and then we adjust the flow with the use. You can hear, well I hope you can hear, the gas is starting to flow into the tank now and if we pull the pressure release valve you'll hear it's releasing gas out. So that's gas, CO2, ensuring that you've got a nice seal that you've got no leaks and then this will just pop off um, as explained earlier and quick release fittings here if you need to use them pull the little disc in and pop that actually whenever you go to pop that out it's a good idea to pull the pressure release valve to dispense any extra pressure before you pop that off so that is very briefly looking at how to add your regulator it works the same way with one of the Browland regu regulators as it does with the Type 30 on the CO2 tank. Okay, so we've looked at the lid that comes with a horny keg and we've put a bit of gas into it. So we have other options. So there's a soda carbonator lid that's available on the website. There's a lid that has a ball lock disconnect and a barb on it. And you may wonder what that's for. So it's the same as this lid, only it's got a ball lock disconnect at it. And the reason that's there is it's, it's another option for carbonating should you wish to do it. So I'm going to put a bit of silicon tubing on and connect a carbonation stone. Now you can see that I have the carbonation stone there in the plastic bag. The reason for this is um, it's, com it's compressed uh, stainless steel and it's very porous. And the reason you don't touch it with your hand is uh, the oil in your skin can get onto it and can block it up and can also be 
um, very easy to get an infection with these. So if you're going to be using this and re repeatedly using it, I would suggest that you um, boil it for a short period of time, maybe five minutes or up to 10 minutes to, you know, to really pasteurize it, sterilize it and clean it before use. Okay, so that's that lid with the ball lock disconnect. Obviously, you're going to have a bit of silicone tubing or beer lying long enough to go to the bottom of the corny keg and this on the bottom. So just another solution for when it comes to um, packaging and how you carbonate. Um, I've mentioned that we have spare parts. We have the ball locks, we have the lids, um, we have the, the seal kits. Um, because they're brand new corny kegs that we sell, you'll get a long, long time out of them before you'd even need to consider that. But say you've bought refurbished or second hand and you need those replacement parts that are available on the website. Finally, on gas, just want to see it sitting in front of me. Um, if you want a gas manifold to go with your gas tank and you want to do multiple things, say you want to carbonate a keg, you want to dispense a keg, and you want to use gas for transferring beer or something, you can get these in multiple sizes, two, four, and six. Um, and it's just little um, gas taps, best described, or a manifold of taps with a little fitting on the end, and you can put the Dow Tight or John Guest quick release onto that, so your gas supply would come off your tank. The options are there for you if you need to add extra gas lines or if you want to add extra kegs, but the basics stay the same. You transfer gas with hard and clear beer line. This is, you know, um, food grade, premium quality, and you can choose whether you prefer the, the brand Dow Tight or John Guest. You get the plastic or stainless steel ball lock connectors. So it's getting it into your mind then what way you're transferring, what lengths of tubing you need. Um, the tubing's so cheap that if you find over age that it starts to wear and you've got six foot of tubing, just ditch the six foot of tubing and buy yourself another. When it comes to um, liquid, I would suggest 3 8 tubing is what I use, but if you're using a picnic tap or a, you know, a, a, just a stainless steel faucet tap, like we have lots of them available on the website, and you're making your own home bar, you're going to want to ensure that you've got sufficient length um, because if the tubing's too short in length, like say you lose a, a bit of tubing this length coming off the end of the keg, you'll find that there's lots of fobbing. And a really easy thing to do is to step the beer line down. So take it from three eight down to the smallest tubing or the next size down, do a few loops of that. So that as the liquid comes out of the keg, it's traveling through the coil of the tubing and it's, it's knocking out that fobbing and ensuring that you get a nice dispense. So cleaning a corny keg is really simple. For the sterilization aspect of it, I would suggest you use something like the Getter Brood Oxy No Rinse or um, the Five Star Chemicals PBW range. Um, there is a contact time that you're gonna to need to make sure it's carried out correctly. That's in the region of three minutes. And usually a little bit of warmer water is easier for doing that, you know, deep clean or heavy clean. And then we would suggest that you use Star San or Saniclean or the Chemi Pro San range, something that allows you to um, do the non rinse just before you package. Um, we've went through how to disassemble for cleaning by showing you all the different spare parts and explaining how a corny keg's made up. It is important, it's, it's like everything in brewing, 90% of it's cleaning. If everything's clean and sterile, you'll have successful results. So, that's cleaning corny kegs. Corny kegs are the industry standard for home brewers. Um, there is other kegs available, but this is what everybody uses. They're, you know, every corny keg that we sell is brand new. They last you as long as, if, if you look after them, they'll always last you. If you need to change the seals, that's probably the only maintenance that they're gonna need if you look after them properly. They're useful because they fit easily into kegerators. They're useful that they, you know, they fit easily into Ferminators for the plug and pour edition, and you can package out of these by daisy chaining off them. Um, they're able to, you know, you can package in multiple ways. So if you want to keg condition, add priming sugar, transfer the beer and allow it to carbonate that way, you can do it. You can ferment in a corny keg. You can do um, closed transfers from uni tanks like the Firmzilla range. You can force carbonate. So say you've left it at the last minute and you're going to a party, transfer the beer in 
put the gas on full whack, roll it with your foot back and forward for 30 seconds and away you go. The key thing to remember when packaging in a corny keg is, especially whenever you're force carbonating or transferring under pressure, is that the beer needs to be cold below four degrees to absorb the CO2. Uh, you can connect these up to home bars, uh, you can dispense straight you know, from it with a little bit of uh, beer line and a faucet tap or a picnic tap. So look, that's uh, Corny Keg and a brief overview of it. They're available in multiple sizes. We've went through the component parts, we've went through how to clean them successfully and how to use them. We are gonna do some extra videos in the near future on how to successfully package into them and showing you the practical side of it. Um, all our Corny Kegs are brand new, never refurbished. Uh, they're available in mul multiple sizes on the website. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us and consider giving us a sub subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when our new videos come out. Happy brewing.